Okay, we are now on step 18 and uh, we're now using parts from bag C. And uh, you can see here I've got um, some spare yogurt tubs where I label up the yogurt tubs with uh, little ABCs from the packets so I know where they are and I use those to generally hold my parts in. So um, various people use various things but uh, I have them, I clean them out, use them as they're plastics, so I'd rather use them rather than throw them away, help our environment. Um, so yeah, from, from uh, the bag C, we've got to do the differential gears and we need to make two of these. Uh, I've gathered the components, as you can see here. Um, so we've got um, the two by eight millimeter machine pan head screws. Uh, I've got six of those. Uh, we've got these um, washers. Uh, they are the nine millimeter uh, wide, but they're uh, MC9s. We need four of those. Um, we've got the uh, star shaft. We've got two of those. We've got the large bevel gears, which are these. And we've got the small bevel gears, which are these. So we need four of those and six of the small bevel gears. Uh, we also need um, the uh, ring gear casing. It's like a casing where these go in uh, and the differential cover as well. So we need two of those as well. And um, we also have to make a choice. Um, where are we going to run this machine? Um, if you want to run it more on slippery surfaces, um, you can lock the rear uh, differential, which is saying on here, or you can leave them in, in the open format so that the differentials work on the, both the axles. Look, um, I'm a, I love my RC cars, so I'm going to try it first of all with the differentials open. Um, I'm not a great... Um, don't think I'm going to be using this as a as a crawler, so to speak. It's probably more of a cross country type machine. Um, but let's see how it performs with the diffs in the open position. Uh, and if it comes to it, I can always come back and change it. That's all the love of this hobby. And uh, yeah, let's get these put together. So we've got to make two of them, and we've got to put them. It's, it's a case of slipping things through, put them into place, and greasing things up and screwing the the cases closed. So. Um, a little bit of work to do, there we are. I should get on and do that. So we're just completing the uh, step 18 where we're making two of the differentials. So uh, here you have um, one of them I've made up already. Um, here's one that I've put all the planetary gears in and so forth. And it, it is a case of um, popping these on now. So um, it's just a case of putting the cases together and we pop these around and yeah, it's easy, it's easy as that. So you just put things together. So they are. There we go. And and then it's just a case of the small little screws. Pop those into place and screw them down so that they are completely screwed and tight. You don't have to be too mad. Again, this is only as aluminium. Um, so yeah, but uh, adds a little bit of weight into the into the differentials. And um, yeah, there we are. So that's step 18 um, that we've now completed and we can now go on to step 19 and 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 here i've like i say i've here I've put the um differentials open so that they they are working and running um, and we'll see how the car performs uh, out on there out on the road there so there we are so step 18 complete We are now on step 19 and step 19 we need the shafts and uh, the drive shafts, we need the front drive shafts here. Um, so we need to look at these. So one of these has got um, like a little pin system on it and one of them doesn't. Um, we also need some of the um, ball bearings. So again, replacing the terrible plastic spacing bearings, 1150 bearings with proper bearings, which I've, I've purchased. Uh, we need a couple of these uh, Eclipse, these four millimeter Eclipse. Um, so again, we're gonna to need to pop the Eclipse onto the section here. Um, talks about using a pair of pliers to do that. Um, you can use pliers or you can use the end of your bench and push the clip over. Um, we need to do that on both sides of here, pop some bearings on and uh, that'll be step 19 uh, complete. So how I go about putting these Eclipse on, 
as I line them up over the uh, over the grooves in the in the shafts there so that they're they're lined on and um, I sort of go down to my bench and I maneuver it so that the dog bone is not in the way and in a case of just pushing a bit of pressure and snap it goes in uh, saves you using the pliers and it should spin round um, quite quite easily there so it, which it does so and again just put some bearings on um, on either side so we need two bearings and like I say, I'm using the, the washers here, so I don't need to do the greasing because uh, the bearings are going to do the do the work for me. So we're going to space these bearings over the over the shafts. There we are. Um, so that is step 19 completed. OK, we are now on step 20 and uh, we're now starting to get to the front differential. Um, so. We needed some parts from the parts tree B, so we needed B2. Um, just make sure the correct orientation, so the face uh, or the housing here, this opening here. Um, so this is B2. Um, later on, we're going to use B1, which is going to, which will go on top and form the housing. Um, we need a selection of parts, uh, screws uh, from the C bag. Um, so we need uh, MC5, we need one of those, which is a 3 by 20 millimeter self-tapping screw. Uh, MA2, we need two of those, which is a 3 by 12 millimeter self-tapping screw. Uh, MC6, we need four of those, which is 2 by 12 millimeter self-tapping screws. Uh, we need four of those. Uh, we need two of the MA8, which are the 3 millimeter nuts. We need one of the MA11s, which is a 4 uh, millimeter E-ring. Um, we're going to be replacing plastic spacers and metal bearings with proper bearings. So I have those here, 1150 bearing and an 850 bearing, uh, an MC18 uh, bevel gear, it's a 12 tooth, and a joint shaft, uh, which is MC22. We need one of those. Um, it's a case of um, using uh, all the components that we gathered and making up the front differential. Uh, again, it says note direction here. Be careful here, noting the direction. Make sure you've got the right direction for uh, for, the, for the housing there. So when you're popping on the um, the DMA nuts there. So um, yeah, so we'll we'll do the step at the top. Um, so first things first, let's pop that E clip on to the shaft. Uh, again, using the same method as I did before. Um, I'm just going to push down and rather than using a pair of pliers so I don't want to hurt that shaft I don't want to make any marks on the shaft just in case and then put uh, put the gear the, the actual front housing together so e-clip is on we've done that one um, we need the shafts that we made in the previous step um, so thing to note here it talks about the right hand shaft and the left hand shaft and we also need one of the differential gears that we made as well um, so the right hand shaft just to make you aware is the one that has not got the pin like system on there so you can see this one's got the pin like system on and this side hasn't so um, keep those in in uh, in the right order and uh, we'll put this together grease everything up screw everything down so had to do is we had to line up the uh, differential gear in the middle we have to line up the bearing in each end of the shafts and so they're located into the gearbox housing and uh, yeah that's all we have to do to line that up we just put some grease in this gear here and uh, as I say we, we don't need to worry about greasing uh, too much these ones because we've got bearings instead so but yeah it's um should be nice and smooth and uh, I could see that the differential is working as well so there we go let's get this all bolted together and greased through okay so when you finish set 20 you should have something that resembles this um, you've got your two shafts in the middle careful these don't slip out because they're not uh, held in but um, just careful with the screws as well um, yeah, again, quite soft plastic, so you don't want to go too heavy with the, with the plastics there. Um, so yeah, that's um, the that's the front axle housing uh, all complete and bearings inside all nice and smooth. I can feel they're nice and smooth. So done. On to the next, on to twenty one. 
We're now on step 21, and on step 21, we need eight of the MB5s. They are the three by 15 millimeter self-tapping screws, and we need two of the ball connectors, MC15s, uh, which are in here. Uh, also, we need parts from the C uh, tree. Uh, we need C, basically we need C15, 16, 17, and 18. Uh, and again, at Tamir and their wisdom, uh, I don't know if this is going to come out on the camera, so certainly try and lift it up. Um, but inside inside here, uh, there's a stamp. And it is, oh, I'll drop that slightly, uh, it is stamped A, B, C and D. Um, so again, you've got the A, B, C and D, and you follow that. So we're starting off here, um, this side, and it looks like we're going to be putting these... Um, uh, axle housing pivot points we're going to be connecting those onto here and uh, onto onto here, onto the bottom end as well so you've got to either side so yeah get those screwed through and um, make sure these are in the right positions on the axle itself so just make just pay attention to where you need to put them on the, you're going to basically have them um, a and b uh, on these two inner posts and the c and d are going to go on these two outer posts when you turn the axle around right there we are get that done okay so there we have step 21 we've actually popped on the um the there we are right orientation popped on the two at the top a and b underneath we've popped on c and d and in the front here we've popped on the ball connectors so step 21 is complete Okay, we are now on step 22. Uh, quite a busy step here. Um, we've got some parts from the bag C. So we need this MC1, which is a three by 27 millimeter pan head screw. We need four of MC7s, which are four by 10 millimeter step screw. We need two of MC8, which are three by 14 millimeter te uh, step screw. Um, we need the metal bearing, but again, replacing those metal bearings with full bearings. So I've got a full bearing kit, so I'll be throwing those out and using my ones. Uh, MC21, we need the rod, which is a 3 by 50 millimeter threaded shaft. Uh, we've got the wheel axles, uh, MC19, we need two of those. We need two of MC20, which are the uh, adjusters that goes on the end of this uh, threaded shaft. Uh, we also need from this parts tree, we need C9, we need one of those and make sure you take the little nib off there. Uh, we need a couple of the C19s. Uh, we also need a C13, which is like a spacer. And we need the steering rod, which is B5. And we're going to attach all this onto the front axle. Um, but first step, we need to make the rod up with the rod ends and push the C9 through one of the eyes there. And uh, we need to make that to be precisely 38.5 millimeters. So first step in here, getting this rod correct. And again, as I've got a vernier, I've got that set to 38.5. So I've managed to do that. That's the distance now between those two, which is now set. And we can squeeze in the C9 part. With step 22 we've gone through fitting the bearings into the carriers we've fitted the steering linkage i've set the uh, steering rod to 38.5 millimeter and we are technically the front axle um, is done we are it's there it's it looks very smooth actually um differential is very smooth it's uh, yeah so that's all those parts. So step 22 is done. We need to now move on to step 23. OK, we are now on step 23 and step 23. We need to make a little bit of a uh, factory assembly point here. Um, we need to make um, two of these with the J8s. And we need to make two of these with the J 
fives and, and all I'm doing here is I'm where the where the nib where it attaches I'm just cleaning off with a scalpel to make sure that it's nice and tidy and a nice clean cut and you need to make sure that um, I, I mean I use a fairly good um, a fairly good cutter um, and these little uh, these little ones here these are the the c9s you, when you cut them off you need to make sure that they're nicely clean cut so that they don't bind um, so I've gone through those and um, little warning says here sort of pull apart slightly when you're attaching these to the uh, um, the arms into the uh, uprights of the axle um, and it's a case of putting these together squeezing these c9s into the um, apertures here and yeah in fact I've managed to squeeze these in quite easily I'm just using a pair of um, old electronic pliers that do not have a serrated edge so you don't damage them and it's a case of get them lined up and then squeeze them through there we go and that's one and that's how you, that's how you get these up that's how you get these in okay here we are two so we now have those two done and we do the same again on this side with these and uh, yeah there you go and they're just making sure that they spin freely inside the um inside there so you do and you see how quick and easy that is once you've got it lined up okay so that's making those and now put it put it together there we are All right okay so we've popped those on there now and um, again just take heed of the warning on the diagram here um, you, you slide these through and screw them through and um, yeah you, you don't have to go just finger tight again just be careful when you're putting these on it says it does actually say and it gives you a warning do not over tighten so you, you know be wary be attention there you're just nipping up with your fingers only on those screws to attach those arms on so that's um that's done so that's 23 now done and uh, yeah we're there step 24 uh, very simple um need one of our screw pins that we've um used before um we take the mb8 screw pin and we take the the drive shafts that we built earlier with the other half of that and we're going to screw that other half now into or onto should we say uh at the end of the gearbox so again slide that over find the hole line up the hole pop the pin through so it goes through the hole you'll feel it go through and use your um, allen key or in my case your hex driver to screw that through and you've uh, again you i'm just going to pop this so it goes through and it's just below the flush line so um, you don't have to go too mad there we are that's done so that's 24 done on step 25 we need some more of our four millimeter e-clips and we need our shafts because we're now doing the rear shafts now and we need some more of our bearings and we need some c14 parts and we need some uh and we need to sort of assemble these on so they're all ready to go so we're just completing these steps here so um, on the mc25 shaft i've put on the e-clip the uh, spacer c14 then my bearing then a spacer and then the e-clip and then on the other end of the shaft we also have to have ready our bearing so that's the c25 shaft and we do the same again on our mc26 shaft as well uh, again i've got my e-clip my c14 my bearing my c14 and my e-clip again so that's in place and last but not least on the other end of the shaft we pop our bearing so it's it's ready to go um, that's done so we now have our rear drive shafts ready we can move on to step 26. step 26 is our shafts that we've just made our uh, differential that we also made and um, we're going to need to pop some um, ceramic grease on there so that it's got some grease on there ready and again you need to make sure that the b3 part is in the right orientation so we're going to do that so we've got that there uh, i'm just going to running a bit low on this um, <laughs> 
you forget how you know you, how many uh, how much of this you actually use. Um, so um, I do tend to normally use white grease, um, but as it was in the kit, I thought I'd use it. So there's some white. There's some of the ceramic grease on there, and we need to make sure that we put the the, um, the shafts in the right way. So the shaft that we made in 25, the MC25 shaft, that's going to come on this side. So there we go. That's the one with the little pin on it. So that goes in this way. Um, we need to engage the gears, which it has. And then we need to line up the bearing and the bearing on each side. So we're just going to pop that in place, lining up the bearings and the, and the spacers. There we go. And the same again on the other side. So on the other side, we get the other shaft, which is our MC26 shaft. And again, we locate that, locate the bearings in place uh, again on the, on the shafts. And we make sure they are engaged. And there we are, which they are. And the spacers are down and, and the bearings are in there. So there we are, that's engaged. Um, we've got enough grease on there. And we can now move on to the next step, steps 27. So on step 27, got some components together uh, as we did before on the uh, front uh, axle housing. Um, again, MC5, we need th the one of those, the 3 by 20 millimeter tapping screw, uh, MA2s, we need six of the 3 by 12 millimeter tapping screws. Uh, we need four of the MA8s. We need a E-clip ring, which is one of those, four millimeter. Uh, again, replacing our bearing with our proper bearings. They work metal bushing with our proper bearings, our 12 tooth gear and our shaft, a joint shaft. And it's very similar to what we did before. Um, making note again on the drawing of the uh, M8 three millimeter nuts uh, sitting in the housing correctly, either side here and here. Um, and then screwing the top of the uh, housing and making sure we get this gear shaft, output shaft in place and properly greased up. Um, so yeah, going to get that sorted out. So first things first, pop that E-ring on that shaft and build that little uh, output shaft and grease and then we put things together. Right, we're on step 28. And much the same as we did on the front axle, we've got the same with the rear axle. So we need a uh, number of parts. We need uh, MC3s, we need two of those. They're like a, a three by four millimeter screw. We need eight of MB5s, which are the three by 15 millimeter self-tapping screws. We need our ball ends. Uh, we also need from the parts tree uh, C, uh, we need C15. 16, 17 and 18 and again like on the uh, front axle they're already pre-stamped with the A, B, C and D so you can make sure you get the right ones in the right position um, and it's a case of screwing these onto the rear axle housing uh, and we start with the top where we put A and B and underneath we put the C and D. So again, we're starting these inner positions, flipping over and the outer positions, just the same as we did before. Okay. Okay, so we've completed now the step 28. So again, much similar on the, as we did on the front axle, we've placed the uh, C5, C15, C16, C17 and C18 in the right positions and screwed those all through with the ball nuts at the front. Um, so that's it, that's uh, 28, step 28 complete. Okay, we're on now step 29. And again, much the same as we did previously. Um, it's a case of making two of uh, the J7s, two of the uh, J6s, with our C9s, which we've cleaned up and screw them into the axle using our MB3s, our three by 12 millimeter screws. Um, so yeah, much the same as we did before, push these in using the pliers and um, 
assembling onto the axles in the correct way, um, making sure that you have the orientation correct. All right, we shall get that bit done. And also we'll get step 30 done, uh, which is uh, again, the um, other half of the, act of the shaft, the drive shaft uh, with that pin, uh, MB8 pin, we'll put that in place as well. So we'll get that done. So we'll get 29 and 30 done. Okay, here we are. We now have done the steps 29 and 30. So um, we've got the bottom of these sorted out and we've also got the part of the drive shaft there. And again, we got a lovely and smooth differential and so forth. So quite happy with that. So we're getting to the point now where we need to start attaching things to the chassis. So for step 31, we have to take our front axle housing and our chassis and uh, we screw them together using the MC2, where we need four of these, three by 15 millimeter panhead machine screws. So uh, let's get our chassis and here is our chassis and need to make sure we've got our orientation correct. So this is the, the back and this is going to be the front and this is where we need to get the correct orientation and um, yeah there we are and we now need to attach the front housing and we'll get the front housing which is the one we made earlier there we are that's the one with the uh, steering systems on and attach them to um, and attach them to the relevant points on the chassis, which is up, which is going to be attaching them to these points here. All right, and uh, let's get that sorted. So just completing the step 31, and again, just to show you that I mounted those into the right positions. And it does say in the drawing, again, um, just to make sure, um, it does point out, do not over tighten. Um, the mounting points here, very soft plastic, so it is a case of, screwing this through and I'm putting my finger on the other end of there to see if it pops through um, uh, as you're screwing it through and, and you can see when it's tight enough because at the moment that wobbles um, we just need to nip that through so it doesn't move um, you don't have to really lean on these a little bit more um, so it is literally a case of nipping up and that's not wobbling anymore so you, you, you could feel you could feel that and you don't need to go mad because you'll just strip the threads and you will have to then think of another solution um, but that's the uh, front axle attached and step 31 is now completed and step 32 is attaching the rear axle so uh, move the chassis along a little bit for ourselves and bring our axle that we made and again, line up everything that we need, and we need to make sure that these fasten onto these sections and these fasten onto this section, and we need to line up the, the actual drive shaft so it's in place. And again, much the same, heed the same warning, you're screwing the same three by 15 millimeter screws into the sections of the mounting points on the chassis and you do not need to over tighten them you just need to make sure that these are nipped up so they're not wobbling um, so we'll get that done and to complete step 32 just tightening the last of the screws of these onto the chassis so the axles are now mounted onto the chassis and again just making sure that this screw is nipped finger tight so you, it doesn't the actual connection there there we are so we've now completed step 32 and we've completed bag c as well so that is the this part back done and we are now moving on to parts bag d